Hello, welcome to tutorial 112 in this series of tutorials and programs which focus on TradeStation Easy Language. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking again at the Excel workbook object that's available in TradeStation from, I believe, 9.1. And what this allows you to do quite simply is to communicate between, for example, a chart and a spreadsheet. And what we're going to be doing in this particular tutorial is taking for a particular symbol, the price data for a period of time, storing that in the Excel spreadsheet and then updating it as new data comes in. I'm going to be doing this using the, the workbook object and also the price series provider objects. And what I've done is I've already created the program just to show you approximately what it does. And then we're going to go through and start the program, create the program from scratch. If you're not familiar with my site, it's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X.com. Okay, so I've got the program applied to the chart. And uh, in fact, what we'll do is I'm just going to refresh the chart. I'm going to press Control R. And what this is going to do is go through the uh, initialize the price series provider. And then on the last bar of the chart, just once, it's going to go through and for all the information stored in the price series provider for each one of those uh, sets of price data, it's going to store them in a cell in the Excel spreadsheet. And then what it's then going to do is when the price series provider is updated, it's then going to store the new data. And uh, if we go to the spreadsheet, you'll see we have data stored here for the specific dates that uh, I'm looking at. And then we're going to a time of 9.22. I've got this set for exchange time, by the way. And if we were to watch this for long enough, we'd see it populates it with a new, using one minute data just for, for the demonstration. And uh, if we wait long enough, we'll see that update for the 9.23 bar and so on. So let's just wait and uh, I'll perhaps just cut some of the, the waiting time away. Okay, so the price series provider was updated and the the new piece of information for the 923 bar was added to the spreadsheet. You might also notice that I've got the uh, program applied to a e-mini daily chart and it doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm not, I'm using the um, data for the, the pound dollar, uh, but the, uh, the chart is e-mini. It doesn't really matter what the chart is so long as it's for the latest time that it's, it's available so that we get the most up to date. In other words, it's not historic data so that we don't get an historic uh, price series provider information. Okay, so let's go and start developing the program and I'll develop just about the same as I did in the program that will be available for download. There may be a few differences though, but uh, not in the functionality of the program. So let's go to what I've called tutorial 112 dev and uh, we'll start the program. Now, the first thing we're, we're going to be using a workbook, we're going to be using price series provider. And uh, so what we're going to do is just make use of the toolbox to, to start with. And I'm going to double click on the workbook like so. It's already selected. I'm going to go to properties and I'm just going to change a few things here. I'm going to call it WB instead of workbook. And uh, I'm going to make sure that this thing is going to be Save on saved on close. So I'm going to save, send that to true. And the particular name of the file, and what we need to do is make sure in this program that there is a file created for the particular file where we're going to be doing work on. So what I've done, I've already copied that into my memory. I'm just going to paste that here like so. So I think that's basically what we need to do there. And we also need a price series provider. Again, I'm going to double click on that. It's already selected, going to go to properties and we're going to just call that PSP just for the sake of brevity. Uh, in terms of the interval, we're going to be using a, we're going to be actually be using a, a minute bar chart. We're not, we don't need volume info, we don't need ticks info. So we'll look. we're going to load this. We need that to be true. We're going to use the exchange time zone. We're going to use real time and 
In terms of range, we're going to be using a date type. So I'm going to be taking the first date as, say, the 19th, like so. Last date, let's go, don't need that. Okay, so I think we're good there. Now, having done that and modified those a little bit, what we're going to do is go into the designer generated code and we're going to copy and paste this. I'm just going to select that by dragging my mouse, copy it, and we're going to go into our program. And now having done that, we can now just delete the WB the workbook and the price series provider objects from the tray okay so you'll see that we've got uh, several things that have already been set up for us now and the first thing I'm going to do just to tidy things up a bit it's going to be using some namespaces so I'm going to say using and then I'm going to be using elsystem.office.xl so what we can do is just copy that or in fact cut that and we're also going to be using TS data, market data. So I'm just going to cut that as well. And we can get rid of that period there. And then we can just tidy this up a bit. So I'm just going to tab that in. Okay, so you'll see a few occurrences where we're using the, the namespace we don't need. So this just tidies things up a little bit. Okay, we've got the name of our file. Make sure again that you actually uh, create a file, name that in that particular place on your computer or you'll have problems. And again, in the price series provider, we can tidy this up a little bit. Don't need the name. Okay, ah, one thing I uh, I forgot that I need to uh, include and probably um, if you do do this and you delete the objects, what you can do is just temporarily create a new one. So for example, we can just go into price series provider again which will create a new price series provider. Just go back into properties. And what we need to do is create a, an update event. So click on events. I'm gonna click here for updated and you'll see that it creates an update event, which we're gonna also be using. And of course, uh, it won't be price series provider one, it will be PSP because we changed the, uh, the name of our price series provider and uh, again we can now just delete that now let's just check everything else is in ah no we can't we need to go to the designer generator code and you'll see now we've got an event so we're gonna gonna copy that into and the other thing actually we need uh, another event we need a uninitialized event and uh, we can do that by going to don't need any of the, the objects selected go to properties and click here and un uninitialized and there you can see uninitialized again let's just look at the designer generated code and you'll see that there's also something that has been created there so we can go and also copy that into our program and of course we need to delete this as before okay so let's just verify that okay and we do not need the colons there it's my mistake sorry about that so it should just be using and using price series provide one that was the name of this uh, the other one that i created because i forgot to do this before so we can change that there. And again, need to change that name from price series provider one to PSP, which was the name we gave our price series provider. Okay, the reason we're getting an error, if we try and verify the program, we're getting an error. And that is because uh, we included this new bit of functionality here for the initialization of the actual program. But what we forgot to do is go back into properties and just delete this here because what you'll find is that is also included in the designer generated code and we can't have it twice so now that that is the reason we're getting an error there okay so we're going to leave the uh, the update event and the un initial or rather the update um, the price series provider update and the um, uninitialized uh, uninitialized methods for the moment and we'll come back to those but what we want to do now is 
create some functionality such that when the uh, the last on the last bar of the chart we're going to perform uh, a loop through the price series provider for that information and store it on the workbook um, I think what we might do here and uh, let me just check yeah we also need to include the name of the symbol and uh, we can do that we could actually make this an input but I'm just going to hard code it in the program so I'm going to say price series provided PSP dot symbol and again this is something else we could have set up when we were doing the the business with the um, the object in the tray but uh, I forgot and uh, let's change this to um, GBP USD quotes like so okay so let's go now and create this functionality so that on the last bar of the chart just once we're going to go through and uh, include everything on the spreadsheet okay so if last bar on chart then begin and then we're going to do this once so we're going to say once and then again we need a begin then we're going to do for value one equals psp well let's just uh, make that capitals just so it's consistent psp dot count in other words the number of elements in that psp minus one down to zero begin and then this is how easy it is to store information in the spreadsheet so wb we need the name of the worksheet okay so we've uh, we know that sheet one you could have called it something different i've just left it at the trade station default dot cells and then we need the as it were coordinates of the cells so it's one which is the column and then the row well that's going to depend on the value of value one value one plus one which is why we're doing this thing actually in reverse so that's setting up the cell and then what we're going to put in this particular cell is the time so p s p dot time and again we need to know where it is in the order of the PSP so it's PSP dot count minus one minus value one and you might just need to think about why I need to do it that way but uh, that's the way it needs to be okay so what I'm going to do just to save a little bit of time is to go through this to include the open close high low and you can uh, okay so that's the um, the information to store the values in the spreadsheet and uh, in the actual program that you can download I've included a little bit of um, additional print statements just to help you understand the way the program's working I'm not going to include them here just for the sake of uh, saving some time what I'm going to do now is verify this see if I have made any mistakes and then uh, I'm going to apply it to the chart in fact as I mentioned I've already got it applied to the chart but what I'm going to do is just turn it on so I'm going to turn off tutorial 112 and I'm going to turn on tutorial 112 dev and uh, let's just see what's happening so waiting for data okay if we look at the spreadsheet we'll see the information included and uh, what we would find if we went down to the bottom of that spreadsheet is that that is all fine but it's loaded data up until the, uh, the last bar and then it will stop because there's no mechanism for adding new data so what we need to do now is use the update event of the price series provider to add new data as it becomes available so let's go ahead and do that we've already got the um, the scaffolding the basics here for us so just going to go back to the program and it is here that we need to add it the PSP updated okay so we only want to update this thing if it's a bar close so there are other update events but we're going to be looking at bar close so we're looking at args and uh, we're looking for particularly the reason like so and then we, I know that that reason has to be bar close so price series update reason dot bar close 
Okay, so if it's a bar close, then we need a begin statement. And again, in the actual program that uh, I've got down for download, there are a few um, print statements there to, to, um, to help you. As far as this is concerned, I'm just gonna keep it as brief as possible. Now the syntax is actually very similar or identical to what we have here. Well, not identical, but similar. So I'm gonna copy that and paste it up here like so. Just gonna tab those back, shift tab. Instead though, now we know that because this is a, a, the most recent bar, that this value here, the value of the row is gonna be psp.count like so. And that will of course be the same for the other pieces of information because they'll all be on the same row but in different columns. Those columns were already preset, so you don't need to worry about those. One, two, three, four, five. And then again, the values are simpler as well because what we know now is that because this is the, the last piece of information, it's just gonna be in the zero element, like so. Okay, we just need to terminate our end statement. So what the program's doing now is recalculating and we just look at the chart looks like it's um, if we go to the uh, spreadsheet again in fact what I'm going to do here is just uh, delete this and let's go back to the chart I'm gonna refresh it and let's just go and let this thing recalculate everything again okay now one thing that um, you can get with this program is because it is doing a lot of uh, gathering a lot of information is you can get an infinite loop uh, being uh, reported it's not actually a infinite loop it's just a, a lot of calculation and uh, trade station sort of thinks it's an infinite loop so what we can do is create something here called infinite loop detect equals false like so let's just go back to the chart and switch on our dev again wait for the data and then we can go and look at the spreadsheet when it's uh, when it's finished okay that's uh, appears to have completed so we can now go to this seems to be let me just uh, go back and check that we have the right program applied format analysis techniques just noticing that the um okay we do have uh, pound dollar i was uh, confused by that so let's uh, that looks fine and uh, let's just have a look make sure they're in in order and what we should now having just created that pro that little bit of extra functionality we should see again every every minute in this particular case we should get a new di data item being added to the spreadsheet okay just saw there the 953 being added to the spreadsheet Okay, I hope you have found this program useful and uh, as I said, it, it will be available for download. Thank you.